Greetings ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video of our Ultimate Skarm Let's Play. The purpose of this video is going to be a guideline on creating a good foundational character so the player will have the easiest start in Ultimate Skarm without feeling too overwhelmed. We'll open up with which skills a player should consider taking, making money easily at the very start of the game, getting properly geared and prepared for the proper adventuring that will be coming, as well as the overarching goal that the player should consider once properly prepped. At the end of the video, if I've done my job correctly, you should feel confident in knowing what to do at the start of the game. First off, as you can see, I'm in Riverwood. In the Ultimate Skyrim MCM, one of the options is to pick your location. So the reason why I picked Riverwood is because it's good for tutorializing, but if you're a new player, Riverwood is a great place to start because it has everything you need. It has warm weather, plentiful food, fresh water to drink, and a free bedroll to rest and level up in. So if you're new to Ultimate Skyrim, I do recommend Riverwood. Right now it's grayed out because I already established all my, my locations and all this other stuff, so don't worry about that. So with that being said, let's open up our skills. So in Ultimate Skyrim, as you can see at the start, we do have three perks available for us. It's very generous of Ultimate Skyrim to give us three perks. These three perks will allow us to create a nice little foundation for our character to make the leveling up and adventuring process that much more easier. So our first perk point should go into Alchemy. Now the reason why is pretty straightforward. Alchemy does allow us to create basic potions such as health, stamina, and magicka as well as poisons as well. And we'll need this in order to deal with a lot of the challenges in Ultimate Skyrim because the enemies are a lot more dangerous. They do a lot more damage. So you kind of need the option to be able to create potions on the fly. So you'll be able to survive all the, the terrible, terrible, terrible damage that is to come your way. So your first point should be an alchemy. What? I did pick this. Yes, only one point. So it says one out of two. You just want to put one. Just one, not two out of two. Just one. Okay, <laughs> I should mention that. Anyways, let's go put our second perk into haggling. Okay, so the reason why we pick haggling is because we get a discount on items bought from vendors as well as we get a little bit of a bonus from items sold to vendors. This is pretty good because you'll want to be able to save up for those big ticket items as quickly as possible so you're not faffing around so much. It just it just makes the sort of buying and selling process that much more easier. That's why I pick haggling for number two. So our last perk, our last one should go into smithing. So as you can see, craftsmanship is grayed out because in Ultimate Skyrim, uh, the way blacksmithing work ha works has changed. In order to level up your craftsmanship or um, gain access to uh, different kinds of smithing, like say elven smithing, you need the three following things. You need to have the skill for it, number one. You need to have the perk available. And you also need to have a corresponding book you need a book in order to be able to have access to, say, any kinds of smithing. Like, for example, Dryonic blacksmithing, you need to find a book on Dryonic blacksmithing. So, for... let me go down. So, for, say, craftsmanship, in order to be able to click on this, I need to get the book from a blacksmith. So, why don't we just do that right now? All right, so as you can see, we're gonna buy this craftsman manual right here. And as you can read in the description, it will allow us to learn the basics of craftsmanship. Boop, there we go. Until next now we'll go to our skills and we should be able to purchase it. There you go. So why do I recommend craftsmanship as your third and last one? Because it will allow you, the player, to create a vast array of items that you wouldn't be able to craft otherwise, such as tents, bags, armors, and weapons. It is, I would highly, highly recommend uh, basic craftsmanship out of anything else, even if you don't pick alchemy or bartering, only because you really are nerfing yourself if you don't have access to just the basic basics of craftsmanship you really are uh, making yourself in a putting yourself in a pretty terrible place but now that we have the foundations of our character all, all ready to go now why don't we learn how to make some money 
So now we have all basic skills under our belt, but how do you make easy money? Well, the easiest way I found to make decent money fast at the very start of the game is to make wooden flutes. Wooden flutes are a miscellaneous item that doesn't have a use beyond selling as far as I know, and considering the materials necessary to make flutes, they sell very well, around 20 to 23 septums a piece. Now, that doesn't sound like much, but when you're making flutes by the cart full, it adds up fast. So let's go make some flutes right now. Boop, we'll take a woodcutter's axe because we'll need one. I cannot emphasize enough how important a woodcutter's axe is as a utility item. Always keep one with you at all times. Then we either find a wood chopping block, either the one over here that this person's using, or we find a tree to chop. Why don't we find a tree to chop because I think that would be a lot more funner or more more interesting. Murmur interesting? Murmur interesting indeed. Murmur interesting to watch indeed. So we'll take out our woodcutter's axe like so. And we'll just start chopping this tree. This might take a little bit. Alright, now all we need here is the wood. So we'll just grab the wood and then the pal will disappear. Unfortunately, as a rule of thumb, ladies and gentlemen, if you want everything from a wood pile, from chopping down a tree, you must loot the dead wood, dead wood branches, and the kindling first, and loot the wood last. If you loot the wood first, then the pile will disappear, and all these items will be unable to be grabbed on. Like, I'll, I'll click on the kindling, and I won't be able to pick it up anymore. So, as a rule of thumb, everything else first, wood, grab the wood last, if you want everything from a wood pile, just as a rule of thumb. So... Now we're going to go to our magic, we're going to go to our powers, go to our crafting ledger, press Z to activate. And now as you can see we have a big list of items of things we can make here. Kindling, kindling, tanning rack, uh, wood in flutes. As you can see the value as compared to everything else can sell for 60 septums. That's pretty impressive. So we want to make as many as we can here, as many as we possibly can. All right, so now we want to take our wooden flutes to the vendor. All right, so as you can see, our wooden flutes will sell for 20 septums a piece. So times that by 10, that's 200 septums. That's pretty good for basically zero effort work. So. As far as you are concerned at this point, you basically want to rinse and repeat that process until you make around a thousand septums, at which point we'll get to the next part of our uh, series, or next part of the video I should say, which is crafting our gear, so I'll be with you in a second. Alright ladies and gentlemen, so here we are. At this point, you should have over maybe a thousand to three thousand septums once you re rinse and repeat the process of selling the flutes, or depending on how, how much you feel like you need. At this point, you want to go to your local blacksmith. In this case, it's Alver. Go to what he got for sale. Go to his miscellaneous items. And even though it's not seen here, what you want to buy, let's go to my own little section you want to buy all of his fur plate all of his leather and all of his leather strips that's what you want to buy okay you should have that in your inventory and then the next step here is you want to go to your magic your powers go to crafting ledger and then press z but before we do that i want to mention something about the crafting ledger if you're within say a crafting area like say you have a tanning rack a forge and the newly created crafting table if when you use a crafting ledger, you don't have to be, n don't have to directly use these crafting zones. You can just sort of press Z, and then you'll have access to all of them without actually being need to be physically there. So it's a very convenient way of being able to create everything without having to walk around everywhere. Okay, so we're gonna press Z right now. I can reach the tanning rack. I can create reach the crafting table, I can reach the forge. So that's the crafting ledger letting you know that you can craft from those areas without actually being physically there. So at this point, what we want to do 
is create some leather box pouches and we're going to create six of them. Why? It's because in Ultimate Skyrim, you have access to six waste slots, which are used to equip pouches, and you have six of those slots. And these leather box pouches allow you to, are, are very malleable in the sense that you can select on where you want to put them. So you don't even necessarily have to equip a hundred leather box pouches you can have say maybe two pouches maybe a leather book holster if you want to role play a little bit like a, as a wizard you can you can do quite a bit but in this case just for gameplay purposes we're going to create six leather box pouch leather box pouches because that increases our carry weight by the the greatest amount by 50 points which is quite significant and, you, and it comes in gray too if you like the color gray but i like the brown so I'm going to create brown, create six of them, one, two, three, four, five, and six. There we go. So we're going to tab out now, go to our items. So as you can see, we have leather boxes. We're going to click on them. Click. So as you can see, it says, where do you want to wear this pouch? And we have six slots available. So if you have two pouches and they're both say selected or equipped for the front right they'll both cancel each other out so if that does happen i'll just give an example here okay so front right and here's another one let's select it again so we have two front rights obviously we can't equip those two at once because they take up the same slot so if you want to fix this what you want to do is drop one just drop it oh Okay, so it goes blank, it turns into a blank slate. That's what you want to see. So pick it up again, and then you'll see it turn back to like a blank slate. So if you ever come across that problem, we'll just drop it one more time just for brevity's sake. Pick it up, and then it'll turn back into like a basic, its basic form, its stem cell, if you will. So that way you can fix it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go from front right front left, side right, side left, back right, back left. So there are no mistakes like that. And we can have everything equipped on all our uh, waste slots. So we'll do this right now. There you go. Front left. There you go. Side right. Oh, no. Side left and back right and back left for the last one. And then we're just going to click on these. And there you go. They're all equipped. We got a total carry weight of 390. That's pretty nice for basically zero to little effort. But we're not done yet, folks. We still have to make our backpack. So we're gonna press Z again. We're gonna go into this search bar here and type in backpack. As you can see, we have a couple of backpacks here. I wouldn't recommend going for these just yet. We're gonna make something very simple. We're gonna make a nice brown backpack because it matches with our leather pouches and it only takes hide lace. So now we're gonna just click on here up here, left click, and it empties that, and we're gonna make some hide lace. Click one hide lace, and there we go. Now we can make our brown backpack. Very nice, boom. There we go. Now we're gonna equip that. An extra 40 carry weight for doing nothing. Absolutely astounding, but we're not done yet. We still have to make our leather bandolier. Oh, I'm gonna burp. Uh, no, I'm not. So we're gonna make a leather bandolier. As you can see, it's, it requires five leather strips and two steel buckles. So why don't we make the steel buckles? So we go to our local blacksmith here. Take a look. What do you got for sale? Select one steel ingot, just one. And then for brevity's sake, for simplicity's sake, we're just gonna go to the forge so we don't get a huge list of things to that are a, able to be crafted. Create one steel buckle, like so. And then we're going to press Z again. Oh, actually, no. Yes, we're going to press Z again. And we're not done yet because we still need to make leather strips. So we'll make one leather strip like that. That costs one leather. Also, you'll notice craftsmanship is required. So that, that's why I highly, highly, highly recommend as part of your foundational skill set is to put one point into blacksmithing at the very least or else you won't be able to do anything that i'm showing you right now so we're going to do leather strips and now we should have access to the leather bandolier there you go right at the bottom 
increases carry capacity by 75 points how generous is that and we're still not done because we can increase that carry capacity even more ladies and gentlemen i know are you astounded i am so we're going to go to large leather oh i should show you type in large leather no sorry let's back that up large bandle ah okay just type in large b large b and i'll show up on the little list here large leather bandolier and that takes let's go down two leather strips how nice because we can make those right now duh, 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 duh. leather strip bam and now let's see uh type in large again because it's a huge list of things you can create there you go large great large leather bandolier and there you go We're gonna equip that and boom we have 530 total carry weight that's pretty nice but we're not done yet. We still have to equip some cloaks and some fur hide hoods in order to increase our warmth and coverage just a little bit more. So we'll use Z again. Type in hide cloak. And we want to make the brown one because that's the cheapest to make. Everything else requires dyes, but we don't want to do that. We are not here to look pretty. It requires just one hide lace. So we're going to left click on this. It'll get rid of that. Hide lace, create one, and then the cloak should appear, hide cloak. So as you can see, the warmth is 12, the coverage is 40, and the weight is 2. It's pretty nice to start off with. So we'll do that. We'll equip our hide cloak brown. But also, we need to create a fur hood. So we'll press Z again. Fur hood. This will increase our warmth quite nicely. As you can see, a warmth of 45 and a coverage of 14. So it takes two leather. So left click again. But we can't make the leather just yet, can we? Let's see, type in leather. We need an animal pelt. So in order to create leather, just basic leather, any animal pelt of sufficient quality. So there are a couple of ways to get animal pelts. You can skin them, which I'll get into later on, or you can just go to a merchant and buy pelts off of them. So we're going to go back into the merchant, Riverwood Trader here, and buy some simple pelts so we can make some simple leathers here. Go inside, talk to Lucius or Lu Lucan. So what should we buy? We have 3,000 gold left still. So let's say cave bear. There you go. This one should be enough. All right, so press Z again. Now we should be able to make some leather. All right, for leather, that's pretty good. So now we can make our fur hood brown. Very nice. Very simple. So now at this juncture, you're well equipped. You need to create some utility items such as tents and uh, hide water skin. Hide water skins are better than water bottles because they can hold three drinks, whereas a water bottle can hold only one drink. So you want to make maybe one or maybe even two hide water skins, but I'm just going to make one for brevity's sake. So there you go. How you use a water skin, I'll just show you. Very simple, very easy. Just find any fresh water source. The water up north is undrinkable, so you need to be somewhere down south or near some sort of lake area. So we just walk into the water like so, and then we go to our miscellaneous. As you can see, it says hide water skin. Then we just left click on that. Okay, so now it's full. We get three drinks. Probably a little bit thirsty. Let's just drink it all right now. There you go. So what happens to it? It will go back to its inventory once it's emptied, and then you just fill it up again. And you can just rinse and repeat that process as much as you like. There you go. Very simple. So there you go. That's how you fill up a water skin. Same logic with a water, uh, empty water bottle as well. So now at this point, we probably want to make a tent. So we're going to press Z again. Type in tents. We're going to make a fur tent because that's overall more useful. And we're going to make a fur small. So what does that need? We need four. We need quite a bit. We need six fur plates, a fur bedroll, two leathers, and six strips of uh, leather as well. We also got two wood. So keep some wood on you. So when you do get to this point, you always have some wood. 
So we're going to go to fur bed roll. Fur bed roll. Fur bed. Okay, so that's what we need. What do we need? Fur plate. Okay, do that. And we should have a fur bed roll. Okay, that's job done already. So now go to fur tent again. Hmm. Just type in tent, never mind. <laughs> now I need fur plate. So let's just make some fur plate. So we need more animal pelts. So might as well just buy out everything in the merchant for all the animal pelts that he's got because I'm going to be making a ton of fur plate now just to make my tent. All right, so we are back. So we're going to go back, create some fur plate. I did buy like pretty much all the pelts in the for the, from the merchant. So we're gonna make maybe one of those, and now we're just gonna go back to tents so we don't overdo it. We don't. We we want to stay somewhat efficient here, even though I did buy probably too many pelts. So it'd probably just ignore me about uh, about that. <laughs> so we're gonna go leather. And then we need four k. Okay. Pelt, and then we're gonna make some leather strips for those so that I think that should be enough and then Get rid of that for tent not yet Not yet almost there Need leather strips. Okay, so that should be very close leather Nope, um, there's a little bit of an issue if you as you can see, I'm not able to scroll on anything. You can fix this by just clicking. Click no, but then you'll have access to this. Because whatever you click on, it'll just assume you want to create that first item that you clicked on. But just just to make it simple for yourself, if, if you're ever like trying to create something and then it glitches out and it doesn't really give you this little white selection bar, you can just click on it and then click no, and then you'll be able to see it again. So where was I? I was going to make some leather strips, wasn't I? Uh, I think I need only two. And then fur, small tent. Awesome. There you go. So we're pretty much ready to go. Almost. We're around 80% done. But now we need one last item. Uh, for convenience's sake, the item that I would recommend is uh, a lantern. Now, lanterns are pretty good because they take up one of your waste slots. So that does mean you'll get less total carry weight. And why am I having less? I should have more. Mm, probably something else going on. That's okay. That's okay. But as I was saying, a lantern will take up, let's say, one waste slot. So you won't be able to carry as much as before. But the upside to it is because it takes up a waste slot, it's not taking up your left arm or your right arm. So that means you can still be a sword and board character and still be able to see very well at night. So we're going to create that just for utility's sake. So the way you do that is we press Z again, lantern, see what we need to make a lantern travel lantern as as it were we need an iron lantern first we need to create an iron lantern that's an iron ingot and a forge so we go back to Avar Alvar okay press Z or we can just do it in the forge as well that way we don't have to fiddle around with the list create iron lantern and then travel lantern should just appear right there. So the way you get a travel lantern to work is you need to fuel. So we want to go back to the merchant and buy something called flammable oil, which will allow us to use a lantern proper. So we'll do that right now. Talk to Lucian, sale. And then where is his stuff? He does not have the stuff. He should have the stuff. Oh, there it is. Flammable oil right there. So we're it's pretty cheap. We might as well just buy it all out, because why not? So once we have that, we should be able to use our lantern, because the lantern needs fuel to use. We just click on that. It will take away one slot. 
So as you can see now we have our bo both of our hands free but we can also see uh, with a pretty relatively decent radius around us, very nice and bright. So it's a good idea to bring a travel lantern with you, especially at night because things do creep around at night and it does get pretty, pretty dark out. So it, it's very nice to have, I would recommend it. So the next step is to create a weapon. Okay, so at this point, we're going to create our uh, crossbow. Sorry for that cut, ladies and gentlemen. So as I was saying, we're going to make a crossbow, but we're going to make it a steel crossbow. So we're going to press Z again. It's getting nighttime. We better do this quickly before they every everybody goes to bed. So as you can see, we have a quite a selection here, thanks to our... Um, well, actually, you don't need craftsmanship. Some of them do, some of them don't. That's... Oh, no, wait, you do. You need, like, dwarven smithing to have access. That makes sense. Anyways, so we're going to make a steel crossbow. And the reason why I recommend a steel crossbow over just a regular bow is because the crossbow does a little bit more damage, but its velocity and its flight trajectory is a lot flatter, so it makes it a very good sniping sort of long-range weapon. And in Ultimate Skyrim, at the very start of the game, you kind of want that distance as a form of defense. So if things do go tits up, at least you have that space between you and the target to book it out of there before they, they get on you, right? So that's why I recommend making a steel crossbow as like your go-to sort of damaging weapon at the very start of the game. Because it, it, it does help survivability quite a lot, especially early on. So what does it need? It needs three ingots steel three wood and four hide lace let's just make the hide lace right now uh, da, 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 da. uh how do i make the hide lace hide lace i need fur plate okay i can make that because i do oh no don't want to remove my small tent i do have mammoth make that and make the hide lace there we go perfect so we do have that and then we need the two iron ingots and the two wood. Mm -hmm. It's getting dark out. So I'm just going to grab this wood. Thank you for your patronage, Riverwood. I knew I could always count on you. So we're going to press Z again. Type in crossbow. Oh, I need... Oh... Well, I'm a fool. Never mind. You need the steel. Not, obviously not the iron. Don't know where my mind is at. Two, three. And you need another wood. Thank you, Riverwood, for your patronage. I knew I could always count on you. No, I'm using it now. Ooh, we can make the Dawn Guard. Let's make the Dawn Guard. That looks cooler. It looks a little bit more funner. More exciting. And then we need bolts as well, obviously. So type in bolt, bolt steel. Now that just needs two, one steel and two wood. And we can make a set of 15, which is pretty generous. So we'll just grab the wood again. Thank you for your patronage, Riverwood. I knew I could always count on you. Take a look. And we're going to just buy out his steel because we have the amount for it. And what's also good about, say, crossbows or just arrows in general is you can retrieve your ammo as well so that increases the sort of um utility of the item so create one oh just one well you get the idea basically all right ladies and gentlemen sorry about that cut an addendum an addendum i forgot to mention we have to create our melee weapons and our shield that we'll, we'll use to obviously defend ourselves against any sort of melee attackers. So we want to just go to the forge here. And your first weapon, or I'd say your first and probably your only weapon, is going to be a steel war axe. And now, um, I did already create this uh, before recording, but the, the logic here is the reason why I say a steel war axe is because it's kind of the in-between between a sword and a warhammer. Not only that, it does provide a utility in the form of being able to chop down trees. So it can pull double duty that way. That's why I would recommend a steel war axe as your just um, 
as your first sort of weapon to create when you're going to Ultimate Skyrim for the first time. And it takes two steel ingots, four wood, and two leather strips. That's pretty cheap to create. So now what we want is to go to shields. Uh, just go to backpack here. Oh, not shield, just shield then. There, okay, perfect. Press no. All right, so what we want to create here is a evasion shield, not a heavy shield, because if you equip a heavy armor shield, what will happen is, unless you have the perk for it, let me show you that perk right now. Oh, no, not magic. Go to skills, go to heavy armor. So after some basic tra training, heavy armor stamina penalties are vastly reduced. So what this means is, if you do not have this basic perk, any heavy armor that you will will remove your stamina slowly. You'll lose stamina. So it's not a good idea at the very start of the game to equip a heavy armor unless you know for sure you're going to be putting one point into conditioning for sure. But since we didn't do that with our character, we will not be equipping a heavy shield, a heavy armor shield. We'll be equipping an invasion shield. So we're going to the, the blacksmith again. And we're just going to create uh, a basic shield. Uh, what, what shape do we like? Let's do this one. That looks like fun. They're pretty cheap to produce. Some of them are cheaper than others, even though they have the same armor stats. Like this one costs only two wood. This one's four wood. Very strange. They, someone should probably fix that. Anyways, let's just make the cheapest one. Takes two iron ingots and two, two wood. Very cheap. And because evasion, it means it won't reduce our stamina as we're equipping it. So let's just equip that right now. So let's say we have our steel war axe and we have our iron shield. There we go. So we got it. So if we're going up against, say, oh, where's my steel war axe? Where are you? And then we equip the shield. What? Oh, sorry, I'm crazy. I'm getting crazy. Okay, so there we go. So if we go up against, say, a wolf, we can shield up, block, attack, so that way we have something to uh, defend ourselves with. So with that being said, let's head to the next part of the video. All right, now that we're pretty much ready to go, we need to focus on gathering materials needed to make stews, potions, and generic cooked food. However, in order to get the meat to make the food, we'll need a skinning knife. This will allow us to actually be able to loot uh, the downed creatures. You can find skinning knives of various quality at any sort of basic sort of miscellaneous merchant. So I did buy my skinning knife at the local merchant like so. I will show off that skinning knife right now. It's a dwarven, it's called a dwarven hunting knife, but it's basically used to skin. As you can see here, a heavy knife that is fairly good at both skinning. This is how we get the pelts and harvesting. That's how we get the meat from carcasses. So that's pretty good. We'll need that if we want to make stews in the future. So where does skinning come from? It comes from the hunter born mod, which allows you to skin but also has a level up feature where if the player continues to skin animals, they'll level up their ability to skin, which allows them to gain more items from animals as well as gaining more items of higher quality. So better quality pelts, for example, that will obviously sell for more than a poor quality pelt would. Not only that, the Hunter Born mod does give you a gathering forage ability that will allow you to gather materials from just the local area so we'll just show that off right now i won't activate it because it does speed up the time i'll, I'll show that off maybe later in a bit but the basic idea is you go to forage you activate it and then time will pass as to imply that you're searching for rocks and items and all that and then you'll gain a little bit of an XP gain to your Hunter Born based on like the things that you gather, that sort of thing. And the, the gathering mechanic is very useful because it is the primary way in which you'll gather large bones. And once you level up to a very high degree, uh, the gathering mechanic for Hunter Born, or the, sorry, the forge mechanic for Hunter Born does its, have its own unique leveling up mechanic for that forge mechanic as well. So if you level it up, you'll be able to gather large bones, in which case you'll be able to use those large bones to create 
something it's not called this but just for simplicity's sake let's call them enchanted bones which you can consume and give you pretty sizable regeneration buffs such as a pretty big stamina buff which is stackable on top of the stew buffs that you get so we pretty want to consider using hunterborn and putting that making that part of our gameplay leveling up experience i should say or just general gameplay in general so why don't we, uh, actually here's a good example right here, this poor little chicken. I'm going to show off the skinning using this poor chicken right here. So it's pretty simple, you just sort of go up to the chicken, press E. You can pick up the corpse if you like, that's all you do. Not really much of a purpose to it, you can drop the corpse, press R to drop. There you go. So we're actually going to pluck this chicken, we need to pluck. Okay. And now we can search it proper. So we'll don't press dispose. You want to butcher the meat first. If you press dispose, you'll get rid of the corpse and you'll lose anything that's. Okay, I'm just trying to get rid of this chicken. So you want to butcher the meat or skin it, whatever comes up first. So there you go. You got two raw chicken breasts from that, as you can see in the top left. And now we want to dispose it. There you go, very environmentally friendly, cleaning up the, the dead corpses to get rid of all those diseases and whatnot. So that's pretty much what you want to do at this juncture. You kind of want to start getting your feet wet, which I'm going to show off a little bit more over here. We're going to do some mud crab hunting. You just want to get your feet wet. You want to start gathering materials, some thistles, some wild flowers, that sort of thing. Start making potions, start gathering some stews that sort of thing in order to create uh, in order to get the consumables necessary to do a lot more heavier lifting for those uh dungeons in the future so i'm just going to speed up the footage right now and we'll get to the mud crabs All right, so here we are. I'm just gonna pull out my crossbow, pretty strong. Oh, it's at 36 damage. Doesn't seem right, oh well, that's fine. So what you wanna do, just right click to aim, right click to release the crossbow like so. That must have hurt, big damage right there. There we go, so I'll loot that guy in a second here. So here's also something very interesting about the crossbow. So uh, as you may have noticed, the crossbow's reload time is very, very long, but you can get around this reload time with a, a little exploit I've discovered. So in order to gain access to that exploit, what you wanna do is you go to the crossbow, press F to favorite, okay, leave that, press Q now, and then set this to your one, okay? So what will happen is, let's just do uh, the test. So what you can see right now, takes a long time to reload. But you can override this by, when you fire, press the 1, unequip, then re-equip right away. You'll override that reload mechanic. So you can rapid fire the, the crossbow now. If you want... Don't come over here. All right, this is a good time to show off that pick up the corpse mechanic uh, that I was talking about earlier, because I don't want to be around this guy. So we're going to search the mud crab. We're going to pick up the corpse, because I don't want to be anywhere near that troll while I'm doing my skinning and whatnot. So we're going to move quickly back to the safety. Sure to pick up those bolts, but that's okay. All right, so this looks like a better place. So we're going to drop that corpse right now. Where are you? Right there. Drop the mud crab corpse. And now we're just going to clean it up. This does speed up the time, so it's not an ins instantaneous thing. So we are going to clean it. So as you can see, time has passed a bit. And now we're going to harvest ingredients from it. So we got some mud, uh, mud crab chit in there. We got some animal bone small. That's also another thing. Yes, you can get large animal bones from the animals that you skin. So that's also something to consider. And we're going to butcher meat as well. So now it's the dead of night. So that's the thing that you need to consider. Another thing you have to put in your uh, pockets, your mind pockets, I, I guess. 
when you are skinning animals, you kind of want to skin at a very safe place. I do recommend establishing a campsite. So that way, if you're just skinning out in the middle of nowhere, or like out in the north, that you just don't become frozen or it doesn't become raining and now you're just caught in the weather. So that's something I would recommend when you want to skin. So yeah, that's basically all you really need to do. You At this point, you want to start gathering material, start leveling up your foraging. Actually, let's do the foraging as well. So what you want to do, forage is very simple. You select the forage in your magic, powers, and then, oh, Jesus, press Z, and then we'll start to forage. Then fa you failed to far find anything of use. That's okay, we'll do it again. My foraging skills are improving. So that's a leveling up for the forage. But I still failed to find anything. That's okay. What should I look for? Uh, anything. So as you level up, you're foraging. Uh, we can do this from under the covers, actually. So as you level up your foraging, that selection will expand as well. So you gain more options of what it is you want to look for specifically. So if you want to look for, say, firewood, you can. But because our foraging is so low, we won't be able to like find anything because we're just really bad at looking at things out on the ground here. Okay, so we get, did get some stuff that time, some tundra cotton and some other things as well. So we're going to keep on doing that. Probably... Oh, there we go. We got an animal bone large. So let's see if we can show that off right now. Yes, okay, I can. So this is what happens when you get a large animal bone. So you you are able uh, are able to create these sort of enchanted bones from the large animal bones. And these are so useful, so useful. So the large bone, the engraved bone of Hercene is the stamina. The engraved bone of Juliana is the magicka. And the Kinnereth is the HP. So for brevity's sake, let's go for the Hercene. We're going to create this. Okay. And now we're going to consume it, and we should get a buff from it. There is a chance that you might not, but hopefully we do. The idol refreshes my spirit. Okay, so we did get the buff. Perfect. So let's go to magic, show that off. Hercene's favor. That's what we got. I feel hardier. Hercene's favor slightly improves my frost resistance. Very useful, especially in the north. And stamina regeneration for one hour. So that's the primary reason why you want to use the foraging mechanic is to gather those large bones and to make those Hercene and to make those engraved uh, bones right there. Oh, I'm getting stuck. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. What's wrong with my character? Sorry about that cut there, ladies and gentlemen. Shenanigans in the game. Now, once we reach the point of getting gear to having our consumables ready, such as stews and Hunterborn's consumable bones, now it's time to work on getting our horse. Horses in Ultimate Skyrim not only make you travel quicker, but can carry your gear as well. So to have access to the horse's inventory, you want to press the slash hotkey on your numpad, like so. Oh, did I miss it? Yes, I did. So here's all the actual things you can do to the horse. You can whistle it in case it's far away and you want it to appear beside you. Tell it to follow and wait. Open up its inventory. Show its stats. Let's see its stats. So these are the stats of the Yzmera that I bought from the innkeeper. So you can just read that if you like. And you can also open up the inventory as well. So as you can see, it already has some stuff inside of it. You have a first saddle, and that's the first saddle appearing on its back right there. You can even take away that first saddle if you want to ride bareback and be all native like that. That also does mean you can create your own armor for the horse as well. So how you create the armor for the horse is like any sort of armor. You go to your magic, go to your powers, go to crafting ledger, press Z to activate, to go to the filter, type in bard, and this is all the stuff, all the saddles that you can make from dragon bone to ebony to the imperial and to the leather, which I created earlier just to show off. So if you want to equip a leather saddle, a new saddle for your horse, what you do is you open up the inventory, press the slash key again, or however you hotkeyed it, open up inventory, press tab, 
it will open up this section go to your character right here go to your apparel right here and then find your armor that you created this is the first saddle that we just took off the horse so we're gonna equip this put it in the horse and there you go that's the leather armor equipped right there that we just made so not only the can you equip armor not only can you travel quickly on a horse but the horse will also store food for you and that food inside the horse will not spoil so you could fill it up with stews and those stews will never spoil it will be like a mobile refrigeration unit which is amazing not only that but if you go on the horse like mount it and then go swimming while on the horse you will not be exposed to the water it doesn't count as exposure so it will be immune to the cold from the water which is another little hidden tidbit that you gain from the horse but there are some downsides to the horse as well once you do purchase a horse you'll have to pay a tax on it it's around 100 septums could be more could be less it really depends on how you set up your mcms in addition horses are also pretty expensive this horse uh, yizmara costed around 7500 septums to buy so once you get to the point of getting a wanting to get a horse you want to start hoarding your money as quickly as possible so you can get that horse uh, as early on as possible so you can gain all that be all those benefits but once you do get your horse ladies and gentlemen the world is now your oyster you have the gear you have the consumables you have the skills and yes you have the horse i do hope that this tutorial has helped you as a guideline in your adventures in ultimate skyrim and with that being said, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.